Ah, uh, back when Sega still made consoles. Uh, it's a stormy day in Japan City, and don't mind the cursor, it'll disappear soon enough. Blue hair? I sense a protagonist. Well, this was the early 90s, even some western protagonists said blue hair. Anyway, welcome to the Let's Play of Valis for the Sega Genesis. And this is Yuko Aso, our protagonist for this and the next two games in the series, and general chew toy of fate. The game was released in 1991, and in the same month that Castlevania IV hit American shores. Wonderful timing. Oh, by the way, about the tech speed in cutscenes, yeah, it's that slow all the time, and there wasn't anything I could do about it. Strange dreams? Well, it's probably nothing. Off screen voice. And this is Reiko Kirishima. Let's see, red versus blue? Probably means nothing. The slow pace of these cutscenes makes it rather difficult to provide commentary, so I apologize if there's any stretches of dead air. Yeah, stay here and absolutely nothing bad might happen. Other direction acres, I take it. I don't think I really need to tell the audience that this is a pre-Ted Woolsey localization. Was everything Yuko said in that conversation a question? We'll probably never see her again. Yeah, I was also like, that's the strangest conversation I've ever had. Zalga is making a rumbling of the earth. She looks a bit more surprised than scared here. Like, this wasn't supposed to happen today. Congratulations, Yuko! You have a destiny! Anyway, 
here's our title screen, and our first level is going to begin pretty soon. Okay, here's Yuko. We have a sword, not much use to us right now. Jump, I jump, and a magic slide. It really is magic, too. It doesn't stop until Yuko is either hit or it uh, just ends of its own accord, which means that it will cross gaps. And I call it magic for a reason, because in Valus 3, there's a time when you don't have the Valus Sword on hand, and Yuko cannot use the slide without it. Anyway, since streets are for losers, we're going to take the rooftops. The game usually has a couple of ways to get through levels, and exploration is uh, rewarded more often than not. Okay, we don't actually take much damage from uh, regular monsters, and it's kind of like the first NES Ninja Gaiden game in that way, in that uh, direct damage from regular enemies isn't what's going to kill you most of the time. The threats in this game are usually bosses and, well, bosses. There are only two instant death pits in this whole game and they're right next to each other on the same level. And this is how Yuko knows something really is, he is up. The subways are empty. Christ, that guy wasn't even trying to kill us, he's probably just showing off his cartwheels. Anyway, as you probably noticed, our sword has three power levels, and every time you pick up a new type of uh, sword, it gets reset back to one. Those gems serve as the game's can the candle equivalents. Ooh, what happened there? And they contain things like MP and uh, life boosters and power-ups and whatever. We don't have any use for MP right now, but that's going to change after this stage. Product placement, product placement, product placement. The only non-hidden one up in the game. I've only found three of them and I'm pretty sure there are more. There's no actual uh, score counter, either hidden or um, uh, otherwise, so that's the only way of getting extra lives. Anyway, we are in our first boss room. Now, bosses uh, in this game tend to be more durable than damaging. However, damage is fairly hard to avoid most of the time, so it's really a question of avoiding enough damage to get through boss fights. I actually got reamed by the first boss fight uh, the first time I uh, played this game. It's your standard Gutsman boss, makes earthquakes, throws rocks, nothing special. Shouldn't be a problem for uh, any uh, experienced platform gamer. See? Easy. And anyway, that's a wrap. Enjoy the English.